Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to build a flower pot house in Minecraft. Yep, a survival base all with inside this rather large flower pot. <laughs> Now this is definitely one of my more obscure builds, that's for sure. <laughs> what we have here is a vanilla flower pot that has been slightly improved in the look department and greatly increased in the size department and obviously we have a flower coming out of the top. This one is an oxide daisy but I'm also going to show you how to make a tulip as well as this third one here which is meant to be a little bit like the corn flower. So you got three options to pick from of what you want to plant inside of your giant flower pot. So everything inside of this double chest here as well as my inventory is what we're going to be using in this build here. We'll start off in the inventory actually. These are basically all of the blocks that we need to make the flowers. So this is what we would need for the oxide daisy. This is what we would need for the red tulip. Obviously if you wanted to make an orange tulip say you would just change out the red terracotta for orange terracotta and the corn flower down here needs these blocks. But everything else in the actual chest is what we need for the build itself. So of of course we're going to need some terracotta for the plant pot and some coarse dirt to be planted in the top as well as a little bit of bone mill just so we can have a bit of grass in there as well. We then have some stripped dark oak logs and then all of these spruce types that we're going to be using and then we basically just have a bunch of helpful things in survival. This is meant to be a survival base after all so most of this will come in handy. And then pretty much everything else on this next row is for miscellaneous items and then finally we have a little bit of redstone where we're just going to be making a hidden chest. So first things first, you need to find a location to build this in. I myself am going to be building mine on the outskirts of this flower forest here for obvious reasons, I would hope. And some of you may be wondering where this is in my world. Well, here is the seed in the bottom left hand corner. And those are the coordinates for those of you who are curious. But let's start placing some blocks. So the first thing we're going to do is actually place down where we want our doorway to go. Mine is going to go around about here and we actually want to place it on the back of a block so that when we place two terracotta next to it it is on the back like that and has a little bit of depth added in so just make sure you got your door placed down correctly so two terracotta blocks placed down like that we're then gonna have one next to each of them just like so and then we're gonna have three more on both of the sides go in by one once again and then three more at the back so super simple you want to make this circle shape pretty much and then all you want to do after that is just grab an oak trap door and place them in the middle of the three remaining sides obviously not the one where we have our door as for placing in the rest of the terracotta we're simply going to bring all of these blocks here up by an additional two of course going over our doorway and our trap door windows so we should have something that looks like this for the base and now what we can do on all of the four sides on these two blocks right here just add an additional two on all four of those so now we should be looking like this very castle like at the moment <laughs> but we're not done just there what we now want to do from each of these on all four corners is go one two and three same again over here so that we get this shape which we can then repeat for these three corners too and we should be looking like this at the moment so as you can see we have these four shapes on all four of the sides and we need to fill them in so all we're going to do here is come to the center block and we're going to place one right here to fill in the gap and go out by one we can then have three just above that and then three more once again you can do this three more times So that's the general shape of the flower pot. Now what we need to do is very simply line the outside with some spruce slabs to get a nice little bit of a rim. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill everything else in with coarse dirt or regular dirt if you don't have some of the other on hand. Now we just wanna come to the center of our flower pot here. So line yourself up with all four sides. And just for now, we're gonna stick a single lime terracotta in. And now what we're gonna do is actually place a little bit of grass. Now. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I know. You wouldn't really have grass in a flower pot, but I think it just does look a little bit better in the world of Minecraft, in my opinion. Obviously, you don't have to do this if you really dislike how this looks. I did think you could use bone mill to grow it, however, that is unfortunately not the case on coarse dirt, so you're gonna have to go grab some shears and get the grass yourself. You can grow up to too high just by bone mealing it though. 
So now it's time to build the flowers and I'm going to show you the oxide daisy first, the tulip second and the cornflower third. So first of all, as I said, the oxide daisy. We're going to grab our lime terracotta to begin with here. And from this block that we've already have placed down, we're going to go up by 10 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And then we can go down by a block and add in two more here on either side. That will connect to the flower at the top. But just for now, we're going to come back down to the bottom and on the left hand side we're going to go up by two and on the third one we're going to place down one and two blocks and then go out by one and place in another two. We can then move over to the other side here and we're going to have a temporary block with a lime terracotta just in front of it and then we're going to have one on top of that, one to the right hand side, one in front and then one on top of that. So there is the stem to the oxide daisy. As for the flower, we're going to start off with our yellow terracotta, placing one in the middle here. And then we're going to make a ring going all the way around that single block for a 3x3 three three square of yellow terracotta. And we can then align that all the way around with some white concrete to make a 5x5 five five square going all the way around. So we should have something like this right now, which looks okay, but it could certainly look better. So what we're going to do on all four of the sides is just have two blocks like so. So there's the bottom. There's the right, there's the top, and then finally the left hand side. Looks a little bit more like a flower that way. The oxide daisy is gone, now time to move on to the tulip. So once again, starting with our lime terracotta for the stem. From this block, we're gonna go up by eight more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now from the front of here, so in line with our spruce door, we're gonna leave one block at the bottom and go one, two, three, four, very simply. And for the right hand side here, we're going to leave two gaps at the bottom and go one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like that. And for the left hand side round here, we're going to leave one, two, and three at the bottom. And on the fourth block, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five this time, and then six, seven to complete the stem. Now you can grab your red terracotta or your pink or your orange or your white or whatever color you want. I guess tulips come in lots of varieties and we're going to come up to the top block here and actually switch over to our yellow terracotta this time and have one, two on top of the lime. And then from the top line block on all four sides, we're going to have two red terracotta just like this. So we got that enclosing the yellow terracotta. And then in all four corners, we're going to connect the two at the top here and go one, two, and then three. And we can just do that three more times, going all the way around. And eventually we have a pretty cool looking simplistic tulip. Now time for the final flower, the corn flower. We're going to start again, believe it or not, with our lime terracotta. And we're going to go up by six blocks this time. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then from this top block, we're going to have one in front and to the right hand side. And then we're going to drop down to the bottom here and just grab a temporary block this time and come over to the right hand side. And we're going to have a temp block here, one block up from the ground, lime terracotta in front and above, another temp block here just to the side and same again. Go ahead and get rid of the temporary blocks like so and then move around to the left hand side here. Leave two blocks and on the third one we're going to have one, two, three, four, five and six. And once again, the stem is done. The first thing we're going to do here for the flower is grab our yellow terracotta and place it in the middle here. And then just on top of the lime terracottas, we're going to have two blue concretes. And then at the front here, so this one, not the one to the right hand side, we're going to have a stone or temporary block just beside it here with another blue concrete on top. We can then move over to our light blue concrete and have two more next to the yellow terracotta. And then very simply, we just want some light blue concrete in all four of the corners. So we should have this shape at the moment, which is a bit more difficult to follow this time because we have some different colors involved, but I'm just doing my best to match the actual cornflower texture. And now we can grab some more temporary blocks and we're just going to fill in those four slots right there. Grab our light blue concrete and just place one in front and above on all four sides. And once you've got that done, just get rid of your temporary blocks and there we go. Your somewhat look good looking cornflower. I know it's not the best, I personally prefer the other two. Which is exactly why I've reverted back to the Oxide Daisy. But anyway, that's the exterior of the build all done. Time to head inside and work on the interior. 
So the first thing we're going to do inside of here is actually light it up because it's awfully dark at the moment and I kind of need you guys to be able to see. So the first thing we're going to do is face our spruce door here and then look to the left and go up to the top terracotta block right here and place down a spruce fence. Underneath that we're going to have a chain and then a lantern. We can then turn around 180 degrees, look at the oak trap door here, go across to the left, then up by one block, and looking at the top of the block, we're going to have a spruce trap door here, and just stick a lantern on top of it. These two things may look a little bit out of place at the moment, but as I said a second ago, you kind of need to be able to see the video, <laughs> and they help with that. So now what we can do, that we can actually see, is just grab eight more terracotta blocks and place them in all four of the corners here. And then we can switch over to our barrels and we're going to fill in these three gaps on all four sides for some storage. Just make sure the side texture of the barrel is showing and not the front like so. So just make sure you get them right underneath the block there. And then you can switch over to your spruce slabs and we're just going to place in three in front of all of the barrels just like that. And then we're actually going to break away this center block here as I said we would do earlier and replace it with our crafting bench which as you can see you can still access it from underneath. And then just around that, covering up all of the coarse dirt here, we're going to go ahead and place in all of our spruce trap doors. With these, just make sure they're all facing the same direction so they look nice and connected. On the side where we have the lantern on top of the trap door, we're going to have a bed in the middle. Of course, any colour you would like is absolutely fine. A chest to the left hand side and an upside down spruce stair to the left with a miniature flower pot on top, or I guess a regular sized flower pot, <laughs> not a great big one that we're currently inside of. And just above the trap door, we're going to have an item frame with a clock inside or something else if you would like. I guess that part is entirely up to you. Moving around to the left hand side of the build here, just next to our chest we're going to have a cartography table, then a bookshelf and then a backwards facing loom, which if you are not currently using my texture pack, which I'm guessing the majority of you aren't, you're not going to have these 8 pixels. They're meant to look like drawer handles, but if you don't have them, you can place some bookshelves around them and they kind of look like an empty bookcase, which is kind of cool. So we got our bookshelves placed down, we're going to have a flower pot just in front of the trap door here. Of of course with something to go inside. A grindstone can go on this too high one and on the highest point here we're going to have a couple of sea pickles. They're meant to look a little bit like candles which obviously when we do eventually get them in 1.17 can be replaced but for right now that's kind of the best thing we got. And then we can place an item frame just to cover up the front of this cartography table here. We'll put something inside of it later on but just above it here we're going to have a painting. Moving on over to the right hand side here, we're going to line the bottom with these three spruce trap doors and just flick them up and do a little bit of excavating here, barely anything at all. We're going to go ahead and get rid of these three blocks as well as these five more on the sides and then these two at the bottom. Leave that one in the middle. And what we're going to do is place a smithing table at the back and then four furnaces just beside it like so, a stone cutter in the center and then a smoker and a blast furnace on the floor. So this is where you can do all of your smelting, all of your stone cutting and netherite converting but you can hide it away with the spruce trap doors if you don't particularly want to look at it. And now what we're going to do is add in a couple of more shelves. So on the top part of this block, we're going to have another spruce trap door with a chest on top of this one. And then another spruce trap door over here with yet another flower pot just like that. So of course you can leave these open or closed. As I said earlier, if you do or do not want to look at all of those items down below. I personally don't think I do. The very last thing we have to sort out is of course the floor as well as our hidden piston barrel that we're going to be placing down. So we're going to place the barrel down first, just in front of our loom here we'll break down two blocks and just stick the barrel right there. And what we want to do now, this will make sense later, but replace the dirt block underneath the bookshelf here with a strip dark oak log. And now you can just go ahead and get rid of all of the other grass blocks that we're going to be replacing with our floor block, which is the strip dark oak log so clear out all of that just like so and now what you can do is break away these three blocks here so underneath the loom bookshelf and cartography table as well as these two at the back and now what you want to do is crouch as you're doing this like I am here 
and place your oak button on the actual cartography table so that it looks like that and not in the item frame so it's really tiny like that. We want a big button here that you can actually press. And what we're going to have is a redstone dust underneath that with a redstone torch on the side of that block right there and place a sticky piston down which should extend it like so and then as you can see when you press the button it retracts and you will be able to eventually if we just place the block in front of the sticky piston here get the bookshelf that's hidden down below and yes i know it actually opens up the oak trap door but that's okay it's not really that big a deal we can just place another dirt block here to cover that up if you would like and then pretty much we're just going to fill the rest of our floor in with the strip dark oak logs all of mine are going to be facing the same way but if you want to experiment with different directions feel free to do that but i quite like the clean look for this build right here so as you can see that is now our flower pot base all done just to check the redstone still works press the button oak trap door flicks <laughs> and we can actually access our barrel so this is where you can store all of your hidden diamonds maybe that'll be helpful if you're on a server if this is a single player world maybe not so much but i do think it's still pretty cool to have so there we go everybody that is my flower pot base tutorial all done i really hope you guys did enjoy this video it was a little bit of a different one so thank you if you stuck all the way to the end here i really do appreciate it and i will see you next time bye for now